widely known for student achievement, Gunn High School was forced to confront the dark side of intense academic expectations. It's very important to put social, emotional, and academic learning on the table together and work productively at all of that at once. When we ignore how children feel, how they are learning to be in the world and interact, we imperil them in a number of ways. He was the guy on the basketball team that would just have a smile on his face and just be laughing all the time. Cam was his name. He was one of my close friends. I've been Facebook chatting him the night before at like 10 o'clock. I like walked into my AP US history class when I heard the news. And somebody said like, Cam committed suicide. And I was like, what? Like that can't be right at all. I had never cried so hard. I definitely went through the denial phase for like the next couple of days. I was like, damn. So, yeah. One of our former students died by suicide. And two months later, one of our current students died by suicide. And a month and a half later, a third student died by suicide. Um, and it was a pretty tumultuous time on our campus. Suicide is among the leading causes of death for teens. Since 2009, Gunn High School has experienced eight. More than half of them occurring within one school year. Um, there definitely was um, a culture of blame in the community. The sense was that there was a culture of academic competition and our high school or the academic stress may have been one of the root causes. I think definitely some people at our school do feel sort of a need to succeed um, and they push themselves really hard. I just looked at the situation and I was like, this shouldn't be happening. Something has to change. In response, Cole teamed up with his friend and classmate, Chloe Sorensen, to launch a wellness committee. One of the things that Cole and I were talking about when we were creating this position, having someone to coordinate all of these different initiatives and these efforts that we have on campus for you to... Alongside teachers, health practitioners, and administrators, they're working to change the school culture by reducing student stress and improving emotional health. Gun now offers adolescent counseling service, and that's like pretty much a psychologist that you can go to and talk about whatever you need to talk about. In addition to counseling services for students, among the many changes at Gun High School was a new bell schedule. We really tried to invest in students having a little downtime between their focused learning experiences. So we went with a block schedule Students have fewer classes per day. We extended lunch. We extended the passing periods. Pretty much every possible decision that I make about this school, I make through the lens of, is this going to contribute to student well-being? One of the biggest changes was getting rid of an optional early morning class that had some students arriving at 7.20 a.m. That decision was in response to a lot of pressure from the professionals who know about sleep and mental health. Many of the pediatricians who work with our students understand that they aren't getting enough sleep. There's just a litany of things that go south if you haven't had adequate sleep. The most scary thing is depression and the start of these mental health issues. Kids who are sleeping less have more suicidal ideation. In adolescence, sleep can become a matter of life and death. Why? And can anything be done about it? We have this system where biology is pushing this way, 
the school district is pushing this way and sleep is getting pushed out. During adolescence, hormones cause dramatic changes in teenagers' sleep cycles. Their body's internal clock, or circadian rhythm, shifts, causing them to fall asleep later at night. If they have to get up early for school, they're chronically sleep deprived. One solution is to move school start times later, like Gunn High School did. But for most school districts, tinkering with bus schedules and after school activities is a tricky proposition. My concern has become what do we do when school districts can't change the start time? Is there a way that we can move that window for sleep? I'm a senior. I'm not even an adult yet. I don't remember anything from my bio class in freshman year. Um, and so I think, like, the academic stuff is not as important as, uh, like, teaching students how to take care of themselves and how to be happy. I think if you teach kids how to manage their life, they'll be successful. For mental health, we need to be given those tools. We constantly learn about how to fill our minds with new information. But when do we actually learn how to empty it and make some space? Breathing. Stress. Gun High School is trying mindfulness training as part of its physical education program. Reverse breathing back. Out of all this that happened to our school, one good thing that happened was that culture of checking in. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? And then not just saying, I'm okay, or I'm good, but like actually caring about, like, how are you actually doing? When social emotional learning is being fostered, the kids have the tools to center and calm themselves, to be a good member of the school community and a contributing member of the broader community. All of those things together allows to create a very different educational experience that has proved to be much more successful. Our schools need to build a sense of community in that students have to feel that they belong not only in that community, but that they belong in, the, in society, that they're going to be major contributors in society. That's what a school of the future has to do. The school of the future will engage young people and always refine itself to meet them where they are and get them to where they need to be in order to have a successful life and fulfill their dreams. The school of the future must address the impact of adversity on children's development. The school of the future must recognize that human beings want to learn and if you give them an environment where it's safe to fail, safe to learn, safe to collaborate, you find joy in it. The school of the future will be more individualized and more experimental for all of the people in it as they learn to innovate together. The school of the future must be able to meet every kid where they're at and give them what they need to be successful. The school of the future must continually innovate and iterate. It has to be less about the business of school and more about the relationship with the child. And become something that is much more interwoven with people's real lives. It's going to need to be attentive to the whole child. The school of the future will extend far beyond the four walls of the classroom. It's going to be mixed age. It's going to have students learning at their own pace. I think the school of the future is going to be a, a happy place.